All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to part two of this tutorial. Uh, in this part, we're going to be going over the render settings, the lighting, and uh, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go open up the project we were working on previously, and we're going to go ahead and fine tune this and do our textures, our lighting, our render settings, and all that stuff. So first things first, I'm going to go back into the logo here, and I'm going to fine tune that. As a matter of fact, what I may do to save time is let me just go back to the original project here and I'm just going to copy this and go back to uh, this project here. Let's go ahead and paste this in and uh, let's put it in place of this one right here. So I'm going to go into my top view real quick and let's just put this one in place uh, like so and we'll get rid of the old one and I need to pull this up just a little bit let's see alright that looks good okay so first thing we're gonna do here is uh, we're going to add in some ambient occlusion so let's go ahead and press the render settings button and go to effect and go to ambient occlusion and we'll just leave everything in default for now uh, let's go ahead actually let's go back into render settings and go to the output and I actually rendered this out in 1920 by 1080 resolution so I'm gonna go ahead and set that to 1920 by 1080 uh, and you're gonna notice we're a little bit more zoomed in now but that's alright so um, Let's see. For some reason our target tags aren't working. And that's because we're going to have to go in here and designate um, our new object in here since I dropped it in. So let me go ahead and add this in in each of them. And all right, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and play this real quick. All right, so we have that. And it's going to go to this camera here, just like so. And then it's going to go to that one and it's going to zoom out however I do need to spin this around because I do want this to be uh, facing the right way so I'm just going to grab the rotate tool and hold down shift and then drag uh, so it drags in increments of uh, 10 and that looks good right there so alright so we've got our model in here we've got our camera, camera animation we've got our floor so what we're going to do now is uh, let's go ahead and and start applying uh, some textures to the background here. Now you'll notice I've already got some materials applied to the logo and that's because I uh, just simply copied and pasted this in from the original project file. Um, to do this we're just going to be using uh, Video uh, Copilot's Pro Shaders. I found that these look uh, pretty nice and work pretty well. If you don't have them uh, I would recommend getting them because uh, they'll definitely help your scene out quite a bit. And for the material I used for that video, I just went into the Pro Shaders here and went to, um, let's see, where is it at? Plastic, and then clicked on Plastic 1, and or double-clicked on that, rather, and dropped it into our scene. And then I just went and dragged that onto the cloner and changed the projection from UVW mapping to cubic, and then I increased the tiles uh, to something fairly high, like 4. And I'm not even going to render this out now because I know it's going to be too dark until we get some additional lights in here. So I'm going to go back to my content browser and I'm going to go up here to uh, HDRI Studio Pack by Grayscale Gorilla. And just going to double click and drop in the HDRI Studio Rig. Go to the studios here and I'm pretty sure I used, um, pretty sure I used this one right here. So I'm just going to click and drag that one in there just like that and I'm gonna turn on scene by camera so I can see where this light is gonna be and I'm just gonna rotate this around so that the light is coming from this direction here and I may have increased the contrast just a little bit and increase the saturation as well just uh, just a little bit not very much and could even make it a little bit brighter let's go ahead and give this quick render preview and see what that's looking like so far Okay, so not too bad, but uh, there's some other things we need to do in here to make this look better. And that's just by adding in some additional lights. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, play through this real quick. And actually, while I'm doing that, I'm going to turn this off so we don't see the the uh, HDRI. Um, and I'm just going to, let's see, right about here. Let's go ahead and give this another quick render preview and see what that's looking like. All right, so now you can kind of see a little bit, uh, something a little bit similar than what, like what we were getting in the other video, but it is too bright. As you can tell here, it's just way, way too bright. So what I'm going to do is bring down the brightness back down to, say, 90%. And what I'm going to do is actually bring down the reflective brightness as well. And let's just see. That probably is too much. So I'm going to increase that again. Don't want to go too low on that because the reflective brightness is really what makes this thing shine. So uh, that's kind of important. Um, all right, so that's a little bit better uh, than what we had before. It's still just a little bit too bright. Um, you know, so there's just a lot of tweaking involved and stuff uh, with something like this. Um, you know, you keep you want to keep checking it from different angles to see what the lighting look like what the lighting is going to look like because it does change so that's important and you can see over here from this angle uh, we're just too dark uh, right now back here it's just too dark and there's not enough light so uh, in this case what you'd want to do is you could go up here and um, grab a light uh, you could drag it let's just drag it up and uh, we're going to place it right over here And make sure we turn on shadows here. And go ahead and give that another quick render preview and see if that helped any. So that kind of gives us a whole different look uh, when we turn that light on. You can see it's making this material not look near as great. Um, so, you know, like I said before, it's a lot of just tweaking and seeing what looks good. Um, you know, lighting is not easy to to do necessarily for some scenes. I mean, it, it can be kind of challenging to get the look that you want. Uh, so it's a lot of it's just playing around and seeing what looks right. Um, personally, I don't really care for using the default lights in Cinema 4D. I don't think they work very well. And so a lot, for a lot of the stuff I do, number one to save time is I just use these soft boxes um, and a lot of my renders and stuff. I mean, it's just so much easier uh, and saves a lot of time and you can get some really good results with it fairly quickly and that's that's one reason why I choose to use these so much so let's go ahead and uh, like I did just did right there I just went ahead and dropped in a soft box and I'm just gonna give this quick render preview and see how that's looking um, now you can make your own soft boxes and stuff um, but it is kinda time-consuming and a lot of us don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that. So um, now you can see we're sort of getting something a little bit more like what we had in the original video. If you watch that, um, it's a little bit closer. Um, granted, it's not going to be exactly the same because obviously I took a lot more time on the original one. But uh, you can kind of see the, the grain here uh, within this material in the background, which is what I wanted. Um, I wanted it to look a little bit rough and grainy. Um, I don't know if you can see that through the video uh, due to the compression, but um, yeah, when you're doing lighting, you know, it's just a lot of uh, tweaking and trying things and uh, testing and seeing what it looks like at this angle and whatnot, you know, because when you, when, when you have camera movement and stuff, uh, your lighting is going to look different from different angles. So it's something you need to pay attention to. And, uh, you know, something like this, I would not be satisfied with this result. I mean, uh, it doesn't look that great at all by any means, but, uh, you know, if I was actually doing this for a real project, um, like I did originally, I'd spend a lot more time on this and try to perfect it and tweak it till I really get something that I'm happy with. Like I said, right now at this point, I'm not happy with this at all, but uh, that's not really the point of this tutorial. It's not to make something that's just visually stunning and amazing to look at. It's to show you these tools. Uh, show you how to use them so you guys can apply them to your projects and you guys can make stuff that's really good. So that's the whole point. Um, you know, this was just kind of a overview more or less of how I set up and uh, created that animation. Um, 
you know, I used a couple different soft boxes using HDR Studio Rig, uh, modeled this stuff, um, just didn't take too long, and uh, added some nice uh, camera movements in there, and then took it into After Effects and did a little bit of touch-up work there, and um, that's pretty much it. But uh, real quick before I end this tutorial, um, you can see this doesn't look too great, but like I said, that's not the point. Um, before I end this tutorial, I just want to talk about the physical render real quick because that is what I use to render this out. And um, so we're just going to go up to the render settings here and turn on the render, change that from standard to physical, and go to the physical tab, and we're going to turn on depth of field. I made a tutorial a while back where I talked about how to set up a depth of field multi-pass with Cinema 4D, take that into After Effects, and then add in uh, depth of field in post. Uh, with this tutorial, I'm just going to do it with the physical render, which is a little bit uh, of a faster uh, way to add in depth of field, or a little bit less work, I guess you could call it, but it will take longer to render. But um, by turning on the physical render, just turn on depth of field, and uh, you should have depth of field in your scene now. Um, I just left the sampling quality at low on the sampler at adaptive. There is several different ones you can choose here, but adaptive adaptive worked fine and um, one other thing we need to do is I'm gonna go into each one of these cameras I'm gonna drag in the the model here as the focus object into each one of these and I'm gonna go to camera 3 here and real quick before I do that again uh, if you didn't know this you can just click on this little uh, button here and you can actually specifically click where you want this camera to focus at so It'll, it'll choose the right focus distance wherever you uh, click, but I'm just going to be using the, uh, the focus object uh, tool there to for the depth of field. And real quick, for each one of these cameras, we have to go into the physical uh, tab and adjust the f-stop. So you want something, if you want a really shallow depth of field, you want something pretty low, which one is, is very low. So I'm going to go ahead and set these to 1 for each one of these cameras and give this a quick uh, render preview once again and the higher you set those settings in your physical render uh, the sampling uh, right now it's set to low if you set that to medium or high uh, you will get a cleaner better look uh, but uh, like you know with everything else with Cinema 4D the higher that value is the longer it's going to take which makes sense so um, you can kind of see now we're getting something a little bit uh, closer um, to what I had before. You can kind of see that depth of field in here a little bit. It's not real dramatic, uh, but it is definitely there. And I don't know if you can tell through the video, but you can actually still see um, the background too, which is good. Uh, but if I were actually going to render this out uh, as in a real project of mine, I would add in another light um, just to make it a little bit more uh, easy to see for that one particular angle. And we'll go ahead and give this a quick render preview and see what that looks like. So that one frame there took 40 seconds to preview render that. But you can kind of see um, that's what it looks like right now. You can catch the light off the HDRI right here, the two soft boxes and the HDRI image. Um, obviously the reflective brightness right now is still way too high on this object because uh, the, the actual color and uh, material on this is being blown out. So you wouldn't really want that, I wouldn't think. Um, you know, there's just a lot of tweaking involved to get this to look uh, pretty good. So uh, that's that. But real quickly, uh, whenever you want to go to render this out, I would go back into uh, the save option here. And um, if you're getting problems with banding, uh, you could increase the channel depth to a 16-bit channel or 32-bit um, because by default it's at 8. Um, you can save this as anything you want here. You can save it as... Uh, PNG image uh, sequence or you can just go to a QuickTime movie codec for example um, I think we're just gonna leave it at PNG for now and I'd, I'd increase this to 16-bit channel and you know you can name the file whatever you want there click these three dots choose your desktop press save and that's where you're gonna save your your images at now if you are saving these in individual images and not not made into an already compressed video make sure that you're saving them into a folder or you're gonna have a ton of files on your desktop so just a heads up uh, you would think it'd be common sense but I've done that before so 
just make sure you're thinking when you do that. And last thing you'd want to do is go into the output here and change the frame range from current frame to all frames or however long you want to render this out for. In that case, you'd want to go to uh, manual and just designate how many frames you want or how many seconds you want this animation to, to last and you'll be good to go. Just go up here and press the render button and you're set. So I think that'll do it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, uh, leave a like down below. It's much appreciated. If you guys have any questions, leave those down in the comments section below. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for all their support over the past two years. I really appreciate it if you made it this far. And uh, I will see you guys soon in another video. Peace out.